Welcome to our new series of podcasts. Harmonious is proud to present Michael Francis Lott in conversation with me for a deeper exploration of the book Notes from the West Pole. Welcome to our Harmonious Podcast Series. My name is Michael Francis Lott, and I am here with author Peter Wells, who is the author of the book Notes from the West Pole. And today we're going to be diving into his piece called The Cage. Not far from here, there is a cage with hundreds of unhappy people locked inside. Outside the cage, armed guards are watching. A boy is trying to squeeze out through the bars of the cage. The boy's mother is embarrassed as people around her snarl angrily. She pulls him back and scolds him. If you go out there, bad things will happen, she says. You could die. But again and again, he tries to escape. And again and again, she scolds him. Then, one night, when the moon is full and everyone is sleeping, the boy sucks in his breath. He squeezes and squeezes, and the bars seem to bend. Suddenly, he's through. He's outside the cage. A guard lies snoring next to the gate. He's chained to the cage. The boy notices the key to the cage is around the guard's neck. But no one has noticed. He's free. He runs into the woods. When he's far away from the cage, he climbs a tree and rests. Over the next months, the boy learns to take care of himself by helping others. He helps a farmer during harvest and a shepherd with his sheep. And he grows bigger and stronger. Every day, he thinks of his mother and all the unhappy people trapped inside the cage. He resolves to set them free. One day, he sets off on a journey back to the cage. He arrives at night while the guards are sleeping. Carefully, he takes the key from around the guard's neck and unlocks the gate of the cage. He finds his mother and gently wakes her up. Quick, he says to his mother, let's go. The gate is unlocked and I have the key. She is horrified and angrily refuses to leave. Come on, he says to the unhappy people. You're all free. The people stare back at him and grumble. No one wants to leave the cage. So taking the key with him and leaving the gate unlocked, he leaves the cage once more, disappointed and sad to leave his mother behind. But now that he's found his freedom, he will never let it go. A soft rain is falling as he runs through the woods to the open fields beyond. So would you mind kind of going into this parable a little bit more? Okay. Well, the, the, it is a parable, and it's the cage represents the limitations that we impose on ourselves. The boy is not imposing that limitation. He squeezes through the bar of the cage in order to free himself from the limitations. He's held back by the guard who has a gun and is actually snoring. <laughs> as we see him. But um, his freedom is freedom from the teachings and the impositions that he's been fed. Mm -hmm. And th the mother, who does not want to leave the cage, nor does any other person in this cage, th that person, all those persons, the mother included, have accepted these limitations on their existence. 
And the fear of death is a big one because the mother is concerned with the safety of her child. But the child has got to go his own way. Mm. The child has to find his own way. And his own way, much to his regret, is not the same as his mother. His mother has been held back by her own belief system, her own absorption of the teachings. So he leaves. Mm. And he comes back because he wants to free everybody. But nobody wants to be freed. They've got their belief system. They have their religion. They have their politics. They have their values. And they don't want to give those up. Mm. He goes and takes the key from the guard's neck and re-enters the cage using that key. And then he leaves the key behind when he goes. So the key is available to exit the cage anytime somebody wants to pick it up. So in kind of bringing this to our lives and our experience, the boy has this key that frees him from the illusions or the confines of the culture. So what is that key in regards to our own lives? What is that thing that frees us from the limitations of this world? Entering the unknown. Mm. It's, it's a matter of the, the whole of our lives is not prescribed. The rule of law, which is absolute and over everyone, which is also punitive and kind of dangerous, uh, the boy is leaving behind th those restrictions and entering into his own unknown. He doesn't know what's out there. And the unknown for him is fa more favorable than being back in the cage and limited in effect, by his mother's belief system or the people's belief system. Mm. So his freedom is into the unknown, mm. the acceptance of the unknown as compared to the limitations of a known um, kind of obedience. Yeah, now I'm thinking that in regards to my own life and my own experience, there's some fear that comes with <laughs> stepping out on the limb and going into that place of the unknown. Because I believe that the unknown is kind of that thing that we project all of our unconscious fears onto. So how does one get past the barrier of their own fear and moving into that mysterious place? Well, the boy doesn't have that fear. He has, He's enabling himself to go out into the unknown without the fear. Um, the fear is something that we bring with us that comes from our childhood or comes from a teaching. We've been denied certain things. We've been told that we mustn't do this and we mustn't do that. And the boy uh, is on his own journey and he's not listening to his mother. He's not paying attention to the God who is armed. He's not scared of that his determination is to be himself to follow his own path and to not by limited be limited by um in effect old teachings so you're kind of saying basically to attune to your own intuitive inner intelligence and follow that above any outside influence absolutely That's basically what you're saying that's what i'm saying mm. yeah and that <clears throat> the boy is in the best position to do that. He can leave behind the restrictions more easily than the adult can. The adult is still fearful, still thinking about what happens if I go into the unknown. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't want to not know. I want to know. Well, it's not possible. Now, in guiding someone into that place of you can trust your inner knowing, you can trust your intuition. How do you make someone actually believe that they can? Because I think that's the biggest reason why people don't follow their dreams, why people don't listen to themselves is because they believe that they can't trust their inner guidance or they believe that if they do, then something bad will happen and they'll make a mistake. I think that people really have a problem trusting their inner knowing. So what advice would you offer to strengthen one's conviction in one's self? 
Well, it goes back to uh, when we were talking about making the divided thing whole. The, the boy and any of us has taken on teachings that create an inner dialogue of values. And I could make a mistake by going out there. As far as the mother is concerned, she thinks that he's making a terrible mistake. And she's trying to tell him, you're making a mistake in going out. The unknown is a mistake. Why not stay with what's known? Let's stay in this cage Mm -hmm. and be unhappy and not go out into the unknown. So the inner dialogue that we carry with us that has values of fear and of doubt, that inner dialogue is what the mother is experiencing. Mm. And that's generally what we're experiencing as we deal with something that's threatening. In this case, we have the the child who is letting us know it's okay to get out of the cage. Mm. In fact, get out of the cage. (laughs) Yeah. For me personally, I can really relate to this story because in my own path, I was basically in the world of academia. I was in college and I was on my path to going and getting a master's degree and all this stuff. And there was this part of me that just kind of freaked out and I didn't understand why, but something felt off. And so I basically threw that whole path away and I started living on different farms in eco communities. And I didn't know why I was doing what I was doing. My parents thought I was crazy. That's what the boy did. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But it's beautiful. And it took this element of trusting my own inner intelligence, despite everyone around me being like, you're throwing away your future, you're throwing away your career. And I'm so thankful I did because it led me to be doing the work that I'm doing here. I mean, it's it's totally beautiful. So you left the cage. I left the cage. You left the expectations that other people had of you and even of yourself. Yeah. And you went into a new area that you had no real ideas about. And uh, there was nothing there to deny except the fear of the unknown. And the the whole point really is we live in the unknown. It's an illusion to believe that we know Mm. about this. The next minute of our lives is unknown. Even if we're in the cage, you know, we don't know what's going to happen next. So volunteering into the unknown is a freedom. Yeah. And that's what you experienced. Yeah. And I think also taking that leap into the unknown requires some element of trust in your own instinct, right. in yourself. Because for me, I knew I couldn't do what I was doing. Everyone told me I was crazy, but I had this trust. And sure enough, things have unfolded better than I ever could have imagined them to. Right. But it was that trust in myself and the intelligence of my soul that led me into that expanded life i think it led you but the other thing that happened was that you were being restrained and held back and your own development was your need Mm -hmm. and that was what you had to pursue and the ideas that are associated with and the fear the denial the holding back uh didn't work right and the unknown was a much safer place in fact funnily enough (laughs) even though it's not safe nothing is really safe you know so uh, we're living this life according to our own intuition and that inner being that you heard is is the one we all have that we all have that inner being and we all have the same intelligence actually coming from the source and we're using that and if we allow ourselves to feel our whole being then we give direction to ourselves and we know what to do. Mm. If we're listening to somebody else telling us what to do who has expectations or fears, then we're not going to satisfy ourselves. We have to fulfill the life we're living. That's the game. Mm. So beautiful. Wow. Thank you so much, Peter. My pleasure. (laughs) Yeah, and this... The story, The Cage, we can find it in your new book, Notes from the West Pole. Yes. Which is a beautiful artistic book of memoir and philosophy, and it's a real gift. So, Thank you. Thank you. 
Stay connected with us and get the book Notes from the West Pole on our website, www.harmonious.com. And that's spelled Harmony Us with a Y. Thanks for listening.